What is up guys and thanks for tuning in to another video. Today we have a few things going on. Um, we finally did get the LS1 torn apart, got all the stuff that I needed to transfer over to the new LS3. And we have the rotating assembly going back in the LS3. We're going to be torquing up the end caps today. We've already checked our specs and our bearing clearances. Everything checked out good. So we are going to be going through and doing the proper torque sequences and getting everything buttoned up for good and sent home. So I'm super excited. I do apologize if I sound a little bit nasally right now. I'm getting over a cold, but I'm not going to miss this opportunity to get some wrenching in. So that's kind of where we're at and what we have going on today. And then also, I've been on the fence about installing the subframe connectors. I did build some nice uh, stands right there where I'm able to get it all up on its own suspension weight. But I'm just thinking because I don't have the engine and transmission in the car. I don't know if it really matters or not, but uh, if anybody out there has any knowledge on that, uh, can I weld in my subframe connectors with the engine and tranny out? So I might just wait until I get everything buttoned up and put back in there. So, but that's kind of where we're at. All right, guys, before we get started, some of the basic stuff that you're going to need to do this job effectively is a set of filler gauges, a little bit of uh, silicone, some plastic gauge to make sure you do have the right bearing clearances, a, a decent torque wrench, and then also a decent angle or degree gauge. So that's just some of the basic stuff. Here's some of the specs that we're going to be covering. Just to give it a little bit of a idea. And then also on the end caps, uh, one through four are all in the same way. And number five, they flip it. So the five is actually opposite. Okay, good. Also too, before you even start, make sure that you spin the crank. Uh, everything's snug right now. You're spinning the crank and you're just kind of seeing about how easy and smooth it all feels. And when you get done doing the full torque, you want it to feel the exact same. If it gets harder to, to spin, you know you got an issue. You need to start going backwards and retracing your steps. So let's get busy to the extra torquing. All right, guys, real quick, I want to go over some of the basic prep work I did to the crank to get to this position of laying the crank in the block. And the first up was... I don't know if you've seen it in my other videos or not, but the crankshaft was over here and it was just filthy, covered in, you know, sludge, oil, carbon, all that good stuff. So what I did was take the Purple Power Brake Clean and a green scotch bright pad, scrubbed everything up really good, got it all really clean, uh, made sure all my bearing journals and surfaces were all in good shape. There was no scoring, any damage or scratches or anything that would come back to haunt me later on down the road. All that checked out good. I cleaned it up then. I put... A little bit of plastic gauge on each one of my end cap bearings torqued everything down like I was sending it home for good pulled it all back apart read the plastic gauge uh, bearing bearing clearance spec I know it's not hundred percent accurate but it's the best insurance I've got right now because I don't have a you know any expensive dial board gauges or anything like that so that is a must unless you like to gamble and you like to just throw the cereal back in the box and see what happens I prefer not to go that route, spacing your steps. So, with that being said, let's get on to torquing the bearings. Oh, and if you haven't done so already, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Uh, I've got plenty of good content on the way, um, lots of good gearhead stuff, and also show some love through a new channel starting out too. So with that being said, let's get on. All right, so the first step of the sequence is going to be tightening the one through 10 bolts, which are all the 13 millimeters in the, the middle. All those need to be uh, torqued down to 15 foot pounds. I've already did it. So just to show you 15 foot pounds and the correct order, which is one through 10. So with that being said, next we can move on to, now these are uh, TTA bolts, which are torqued to angle. They are not torqued to yield, so you can reuse them. Uh, I know there's a lot of other videos online that's, you know, I'm pretty sure it would get you to the same close of torquing them down to a certain foot pounds, which is about 50 or 60, depending on inside or outside. But for me, I'm going to do it by the book, which is right here from the manufacturer spec. spec. So I'm going to be doing the torque to angle, and that is on the first bolts, the center bolts first. 
Here's for anybody that needs any more of the specs. Okay, and there's my little shooter sheet right there. We're gonna start with one. Basically, this is the best kind of torqued angle gauge. Uh, I tried using the other ones. I'm not a fan of it. You can just clip it on with one person, zero it out, and basically just turn it over until you hit the 80 degrees, which is going, yeah, 80 degrees. Right there's 80. That's one. Move on to two. There's 80. And I'll move to three. Eighty. Four. Let's see if I could get a better shot right here of the actual degrees. Eighty. Let's move to five. There, six, eighty, and seven. Uh, like as I said before, this is the best torque to, torque to angle wrench there is. Having a clip on makes it so much easier. I got this one at Amazon. I think it was like twenty seven dollars. All right, let's see. Eighty. And ten. It's going to be the final torque sequence on the one through 10, which is all the inners. There we go. All right, there's one through 10, all angled out to 80 degrees, 15 foot pounds first, then 80 degrees on all of them, one through 10, and that's just the middle. Also gonna spin it over, make sure it's still spinning freely, everything spins smooth. And now on to 11 through 20 on the outers. Okay, now we are going to move on to the, the 11 through 20 studs. And the first pass of the sequence is going to be torquing it down to 15 foot pounds. There's the correct sequence. There's the correct spec chart. All right, let's move on to that. 11 through 20, 15 foot pounds to start. There's the front. 11. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. So that's the first part of the sequence. Next is going to be tightening the same 11 through 20 to 51 degrees. There's 51, 20, 51, 13. 
14. Each step we're getting closer to sending this baby home. Let them bald eagles sing the song of freedom. <laughs> 51, that was 14, now we're going to go 15. There's 51. 51. You know, it's really not that hard once you get to this stage of the engine building. Um, I used to be really scared of it, but if you follow the book and you do it right and you make sure all your clearances are right and you put everything back together, I mean, really, it's not that hard. I used, you know, I used to be super intimidated by it, but once you, the more you do, the better you get. And you don't learn by reading a book, you learn by doing. At least I do it. Anyways, 51 and 20, the last one, and this puppy's done. Next, on the next video, it's going to be putting the pistons in, uh, checking the rod end cap uh, bearing clearances. I'll show you how to do that one. And then putting them all into their home and buttoning up the bottom end and the rotating assembly. So I'm super stoked about that. Cannot wait to get this thing in there. It's going to be quite the handful, really. And just like that, all the bottom end caps are spec or torqued properly. Uh, I'm going to spin it over. Everything's spinning freely still. No change. And that's exactly what you want. If it gets harder to spin or you start feeling something that's not right, you need to go back, check your steps over again, and go from there. All right, thanks for watching the video and stay tuned for next week. And if you haven't done so already, make sure you hit the subscribe button, leave some love, give us a thumbs up. And if you think this information was helpful, share it. Thanks. All right, one thing I forgot to mention real quick is actually the last part of the sequence, which is the side bearing end cap bolts. Now they say not to reuse them because the ones from the factory do come with a thread sealant on them but if you take a little dab of silicone and get the threads a little bit and then put them in the end of each cap and torque them down to 18 foot pounds right there and that was the last part i forgot to mention so just adding that in there to make sure i don't give any wrong information out there